over the last few lessons we've been looking at different landforms to do with glacial erosion and deposition. But of course in the exam we may be given a photograph like the one here or possibly a Noest map which we'll look at on the next slide and you'll be asked to label the features or recognise those landforms on either the map or the photo. So if we look at this photo here as you can see there's different layers A, B, C, D, E and F and we need to try and work out what those different landforms are. Well if we look at landform A first of all as you can see it looks like a valley floor and if we look at how wide that valley floor it is very wide and you can see a kind of a U shape here that gives this away that A is what we call a glacial trough right? so the U shaped valley as you can see and running in that valley is what we call a misfit stream you can just make that out there B so B up here this here, this landform here, as you can see, kind of a hollow within the mountainside, steep back wall there. This is going to be a corrie, and the corrie would have had a glacier in there, and then it would have fed into the main valley down here. C, well, look at the evidence here, as you can see, it's a sharp ridge. There's a corrie there, we would say, probably a corrie here. So it's a thin ridge that separates those two corries. Obviously, that is an aret. D, We've got the arete that comes up here, you've got another arete here, another arete there. Therefore I would say D is probably a pyramidal peak. E is quite confusing because E is further down the valley than what you would maybe think. But this here is a corrie and therefore E is a corrie lake or what we call a tarn. And then F is another peak. As you can see this bit here is a truncated spur. So the glassy would have just chopped that straight off. Um, from a previous interlocking spur. Now then, this is an OS map, and it says at the bottom here an extract of Non Francon Valley, which is in Wales. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of words on here that are Welsh, and so very difficult to understand. However, what if you can remember, a quim here is another name for a corrie, and a lin is a name for a lake. That will give us some clues. The other things that we need to be looking at on an OS map are these lines here, these kind of reddy brown lines called contour lines. Where these lines are far apart, so if you look in this top left hand corner here, the northwest, you can see the contours are further apart, that means the land is less steep. Where the contours are very close together, like these bits here, either side of the valley here, you can see that the land is very steep, so the closer the contours, the steeper the land. This map extract is actually showing you the same area as that last photograph. So here's the Corrie Lake that we talked about, the Tarn. This is obviously the, the glacial trough. And as you can see there's the Misfit stream that's running through that. Lynn Ogwen here is a ribbon lake. So how can we tell them those features on this map? As you can see, this corridor here, if you like, has no contour lines in. So as you can see, there's no contour lines here. So the land here we know must be flat, or very even. As you can see, it's quite wide, so they've got a scale line here. So you're looking at, what, maybe half a kilometre to 500 metres, or 600 metres of very even land. So that's obviously a valley floor, so we know that this is a glacial trough here. As you can see, the stream doesn't fit in that trough very well so therefore this is the misfit stream if we know this is the valley floor here and we've come across a lake we know Lynn is a lake then we know that this must be a ribbon lake okay so the ribbon lake remember is in the base of the glacial trough so here's your glacial trough running along here these steep sides are going to be your truncated spurs but then we're going to be looking for because we know that on this map there's somewhere there's an arete there are um, corries and pyramidal peaks. Now, as we know, as I've said previously, the quim is a corrie. So we can see that a corrie here. And what gives it away on the map in a contour pattern is you get this kind of shape here, so like a U shape. Because remember, we know that the sides and the back wall are very steep, like a hollow shape. There's another hollow shape. Okay, so we're looking for where the contours kind of create a U-shape. This one is a good one here, so we know that this 
Lynn Inwet is a Cory Lake, a tarn. And as you can see, if you follow the contours around, it's in that basin kind of shape, hollow shape. So the contours, these are very close together, so it's steep. Steep, hollow shape. But then here, the contours are slightly less close together, therefore a little bit more gentle. And the ice in this coy would have obviously dropped down into the main valley there. And a ret is where the contours come back on themselves. If we can see here, this is like to be a corrie here. It's like to be a corrie here. And where these are ret, corrie, corries are back to back, we know that we get a ret. So here, as you can see, the contour lines are kind of coming like a very tight V shape. They come and then they go back on themselves. Therefore, this here would be an arete. On this side, as you can see, contour lines coming in this very shape, kind of, and as you can see, kind of a pyramid. This up here, pen you all when, I'm sure I haven't pronounced that right, but that there is a pyramidal peak. So you can see the pattern of the contours come back on themselves. The other thing that's important around the West Maps that you may get asked about is to talk about the grid references. As you can see here, you've got numbers that go along the sides, up the sides, along the bottom and the top. And it may be that you have to give a four-figure grid reference. So if we looked at this Cory Lake, this tarn here, this is the square that we want to give a four-figure grid reference. A four-figure grid reference has to have four separate numbers. And the way you do that this is your square, you give the number of the line on the left of that square, so as you can see the number here is 6, 4, and you give the number of the line underneath the square, which is 5, 9. So the four figure grid reference for this square here with uh, Linnard Watt in is 6, 4, 5, 9. However, it gets a little bit more confusing because what you sometimes need to do is give a six figure grid reference, particularly on the higher paper. So if we were going to give the six figure grid reference here, of the pyramidal peak what we would do is you give the first two numbers the same so this is the square the line on the left is six five and then what you've got to do is imagine that that square has been divided up ten times going in the same direction as the actual line that we've just given now i would say if that's halfway it's pretty much halfway across the square so the First three numbers of your six figure good reference would be six five and then five. You're halfway across the square. Then you give the number of the line underneath, which is six one, and then this time you divide the square up in a ten gone in that direction, so the horizontal direction. And what I would say if that's halfway, this here is somewhere around eight, I would say, eight tenths of the way up the square. So it would be six one eight. So the total six figure grid reference, six five five, six one eight would be your six figure grid reference.